Welcome to the newest installment of Who's in the Spotlight. I'm your host with the most what's the story, T. Moore, and today we are privileged to have super lawyer Stephen Zashin of Zashin and Rich. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We are here in beautiful, well, should I say soggy downtown Cleveland or the port of Cleveland? So we're just we're from the city of champions. That's all I can say. This is true. I like how this interview is starting already. Um, we're just going to dive into Stephen's story a little bit. Talk about uh, his background, uh, maybe some of his passions, and if he wants some fun facts as well. Uh, with that being said, we're just going to dive right into it. Was being a lawyer your first career choice? No, it was not. My first career choice was actually to go to Wall Street. Uh, my dad was a lawyer, and when I told him I wanted to go to Wall Street, he told me I was crazy, and he said, go to law school. Okay. And so I ended up in law school. Okay. Just that, nothing else? Nope. That's okay. it. All right. In your words, what do you think are the most important characteristics of being a successful lawyer? Wow. Um, I would say uh, responsiveness. Being able to respond to your clients in a timely way is super important. The other thing I would say is what's really important is attention to detail. Um, in my view, it's the little things that make the biggest differences, especially when you're advocating on behalf of a client. You have to know your case inside and outside. You have to know the details. Great point. So pretty much paying attention to detail. Is that usually what wins? I, I, I don't know if it always wins, but it certainly separates you when you know the little nuances of the case. Because what I generally see is I see people that don't know the little details, and from my perspective, the details, the devil's always in the details. Okay, all right, that's a great point. Tell me about the time when you had to accomplish a task under a tight deadline <laughs> while working with or for someone who was difficult to work alongside. Well, I can only tell you that um, a couple weeks ago, I went three days with six hours of sleep total because I just had so much work that was uh, required. Wow. That that was probably, in my experience, one of the toughest um, 72 hours of my life because if you're going on six hours of total sleep over 72 hours, you know, you gotta make sure that you're on top of your game at all times and that was just, that was just challenging. Um, Sometimes as a lawyer, you've got a lot of responsibilities. I have a lot of responsibility here at this law firm, not only in terms of like the practice of law and uh, managing lawyers that work with me, but also ma managing clients and their expectations and making sure all the work gets done in a timely way. And sometimes you don't have a lot of control over matters when they all sort of converge together, um, but you have to make it happen. Not only are you handling your cases and your clientele, but you're overseeing other lawyers as Correct. well. That's right. And so, and, and so sometimes that's a huge responsibility. Yes, yes. Now, Steve, I've done a little homework. Okay. okay. Steve, you have accomplished so many achievements as a lawyer. Just to name a few. Ohio Super Lawyer. Super Lawyer's Rising Star. DTI Client Service All-Star. Exactly what is that? That is, um, you get voted on by clients, by big Fortune 100 clients. Okay and they decide who they think is the most responsive in terms of uh, who responds best uh, from a client service perspective. I, I'm very simple about what we do here. Okay. Uh, what we do is we try to, to service our clients the best way we can. Um, if clients aren't happy, they have the choice to go. There are a million lawyers in this country. This is true. Right? And so I think sometimes lawyers lose sight of the fact that at the end of the day, um, our number one objective is to service our clients. And that is something that we must do at all times, every day, all day. You also were one of the first 50 first attorneys in Ohio to achieve certification. Yep. Certification is a, as a specialist in labor and employment law. So I always like to joke around. I say that uh, <laughs> my knowledge base is only two inches wide. Yeah. It's 42 miles deep, <laughs> but it's only two inches wide. You want to ask me a question about real estate, you've come to the wrong guy. But you want to ask me a question about how to, how to interact with your employees. Um, you want to ask me a question about you know any aspect of the employer-employee relationship, you've come to the right place. No, I mean, that was just the name of you, but out of all the achievements, of all the things that you've accomplished, mm -hmm. is it one that you hold more dear than the other? Yes, my three children. Walters. That's 
Mike, that's my number one accomplishment. Okay. They are my number one asset. Okay. Over everything else, all day, every day. I take my three kids. By you be by you being so involved, have a clientele, overseeing lawyers, how do you balance that? Um, as best you can. You know, I, I really try to take time to be with my children because it, you know, you as a parent you have a finite amount of time while your kids are still kids. This is true. And at some point they will leave. They will go to college. They will do what they do. And if you don't take advantage of these opportunities to be with them and to go to their games and their sporting events and their, you know, choral concerts and things like that, those are forever lost. So whenever I have the opportunity to do those things, um, I really try extremely hard to make those opportunities. And if that means I have to stay up late working at home, I'm down with that because from my perspective, those are things you don't miss as a parent. Great point. What is your approach or philosophy to winning or representing kids? Knowing the details. I, again, I think it's really important. You have to understand the case. And, I, and you know, we only represent employers in disputes with employees, but one of the things that I try to do is genuinely get to know my clients and how they work and how they operate. I've worked in retail stores, I've worked in call centers, I've worked in uh, manufacturing facilities, and I've done that for purposes of trying to understand the work environment so that when I actually have to try a case, that I know the little nuances about what actually goes on there. Wow. And then if you don't do those things, I don't know how you can adequately represent your clients. That's a great point. So you actually went, did the footwork yourself. I did. Got the experience. So I you did. did have the understanding of Yes, and I will tell you I'm a terrible retail salesperson. <laughs> But I did try hard. Yeah. But okay. I did try hard. But that's a that's a tough job. Now, who are your typical clients that you represent? Um, we represent um, small to extremely large companies uh, throughout the state of Ohio and throughout the country. So if you have a, a company that has an employment problem, uh, they will hire us to handle that problem. I joke around and people ask me what I do, and you say oh, I'm a labor and employment lawyer. People often, oftentimes don't know what that is. Right. So I actually refer to myself as a people eraser. I get rid of bad people. I wow. make bad employees go away. <laughs> yeah, employers love you. Man. Yeah. That's what I do. Okay. okay. It was funny, I thought a client of mine actually um, said to me, and I don't know if you know the show, there's a show on television called Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan. Ray, yeah, Ray Donovan's yeah. Showtime yeah. show, and, and uh, he, he's like a private detective, and he makes bad situations go away. And yeah. the client said, you are like the Ray Donovan lawyer. And so that, but that's what effectively what I'm charged to do in many cases, which is make bad employees disappear. He kind of he kind of works alongside his father, or works. No, he 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 um he had a guy who he had a like a long-standing relationship with that he had sort of like a, a father relationship. But his father is not someone who uh, he, he, his father's involved in the show, but they're not really close. Right. Okay. Okay. How do you deal with stress or conflict? I don't, um, How do you deal with stress? I work out a lot. So I'm, I'm a, I work out six days a week. Okay. Uh, and the, what I find is, is that, that, that is my that is my true stress reliever. So I work out first thing in the morning. Okay. Um, and I do it six days a week. And the reason why I do it is really to get rid of stress. No, working out early morning, does you feel to give you more fuel throughout your day? Usually doctors say if you work out. It depends on the workout, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. So I think it depends on on uh, on the day, but that's really my my goal, which is to get me through. If I try to do it at the end of the day, I'm I'm, I'm fried. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not going to get it done. Yeah, I do understand. I'm the same way. Um, last but not least, this is the last question. Um, I understand you're a huge Cleveland sports fan. I am. Let's talk about that. A bit. All right. So <laughs> my father moved to Cleveland in 1966. Okay. He died in 2010. So he went through the entire drought and he never saw a championship in Cleveland. But one of the things that I remember most about my relationship with my father is going to Browns games, Indians games, and Cavs games, even back to the Richfield Coliseum, old municipal stadium. Um, and so, uh, you know, last year was a special year. It was a very special year. And I just remember being with my one son was actually out of town. My other son and my daughter and my wife were with me. Um, and we went to the watch party, actually, the game seven watch party. And I just remember the true chaos and that that uh, that was so good for the city of Cleveland. Unbelievable. And so now we're on the road to maybe make it happen again. Oh, we're definitely going to close it up tonight. I hope so. No. You're a man of many talents. Yes. I'm from the school of the gifted as well. Okay. Um, I understand you like playing the guitar and singing. That's true. And also have 
a band called Faith and Whiskey. And whiskey. If you don't have one, you better have the other. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great point. Can I have something? <laughs> now, I don't know what type of guitar this is. Well, that's a ukulele, I think. Well, it might be a guitar, but it's small. Okay, ukulele. Yeah. Now, I can't play guitar lick. Okay. But I can look like I can play guitar. Okay. It's all about the hands. I need my camera to get my hands. All right. It's the hands, it's the face, and it's the knees. You see the feet? <laughs> now, tell me a little bit about your group. All right, so our, our group, uh, we're a bunch of professionals, like in all different careers. Lawyers, doctors, judges, everything, and uh, we play music. We play 70s and 80s rock, and we nice. play all over. We played virtually every uh, venue in Cleveland. So we played the only place we haven't played are Rock Roll Hall of Fame and Quicken Loans Arena. Wow. We played Nautica or Jacob's Pavilion. We yeah. played House of Blues. We played every other club in town, pretty much. And uh, it's really a passion of mine, and it's, it's another form of stress relief, which is every Monday night we practice together. And it's a just a great two hours of release to play music with uh, people I really enjoy being with. I'll tell you what, if you're ever out of town and you need an extra guitar guy, yep. I'm your guy. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I'll tell you. Fair well, enough. we're getting ready to close out. I thank you so much for having us. This is a beautiful, beautiful place. Thank you. Um, I'll probably bring a date up here. Work some takeout, bring a date up here, to sit and look at the beautiful Lake Erie. Yep. You know. Um, last but not least, we're closing out. Was it something I said? <laughs>